My name is Bobby DeBrito. I am a portrait photographer. I also own a organic soap company called Indie Soap. And my photography business is called Bobby DeBrito Photography. My educational background is I went to high school in Bakkens, a little small town um, slightly north of Sydney. I went to college to actually become an RN and um, my very last semester I decided that that was not the direction that I was meant to go. So I started doing photography, I was doing photography well before that and um, I just got really good at it really fast and I graduated out of college with an Associates of Science degree. I taught myself how to do photography, which is um, hard in itself because you want to reach out to other photographers to learn from them and you see everybody doing big things with photography and when you're just beginning, it's really hard. Um, I didn't have much help. I got the door closed on me a lot when it comes to asking questions to fellow photographers. So. I dove into YouTube, I did lots and lots of Photoshop tutorials online through Adobe, and I just went out and took pictures and pictures and more sessions and free and free and free until I got good enough to sell my art. I did not start making money doing photography until approximately 2010, um, but I was doing photography since 2008. I started doing photography um, out of a life circumstance that happened to me. Um, I was just put in a situation where I was um, made to take care of my kids and myself um, by myself. So. I was just thinking about any way that I could make some money on the side while I was going to college, also while I was working full time. And it, um, it turned into family wanting me to do pictures of them and then friends of the family that wanted me to do that. And it just grew and grew and grew slowly but surely. And there was a point in time where somebody had reached out to me and asked me if I would like to do their wedding and they offered to pay me a certain amount of money and that's when it occurred to me that I could actually, maybe, if I learned the art well, that I could make this my career path. So that's what I did. Um, there was a point in my life where I was going to college full time. I was working full time and I had three kids at that time and I was going into my very last semester to be an RN and my instructor at Edison actually pulled me aside and she told me that I really, really need to think about the career path that I am set to go on because she had also had me do photos of her family and I think she saw the talent in me that I wasn't quite ready to see um, because it's really unsettling to work for yourself, have all these little people that are depending on you. Um, and she told me that if I could, that I should follow my heart with my career path. And that made me really sit down and think about why I was going to nursing school, uh, my reasons behind that, the fact that I was becoming burned out on healthcare already. I had already worked in the field for about 11 years. And I graduated out with an associate's in science and instead of continuing with the nursing program. And by then, my schedule was full every single evening with photo shoots. So um, I wasn't expecting or planning on being a photographer um, for my whole career, uh, my adult life, but it turned out to be an, an amazing blessing. The different types of photography that I do is I shoot weddings, I 
do high school seniors. I also photograph many families. I photograph children. I do boudoir in my studio in Piqua. Um, really anything portrait photography is my specialty. My favorite aspect of my job um, when it comes to the genre of photography that I do is by far boudoir photography. Um, I was, for many, many years, I was at the mercy of renting Airbnbs or hotel rooms, which weren't always so pretty to do boudoir photography in. And um, I was on the hunt for a studio for many years, something that I really loved and that had lots of natural light in it. And a few years back, I was fortunate and found a space in Piqua for my boudoir studio. I also do headshots up here. I do children's photography up here. I do pet photography as well. Um, but it has opened up the availability for me to shoot where I would like to be, which is in natural light still. Um, but I, we are inside, but it's full of natural light. My first experience with the arts would be when I was, I believe I was in elementary, there was a play at the school um, in Bakken's. Uh, the play was called Annie and I was just a backstage person that got things ready and I did some of the paintings for the um, the backdrops for the play and that's when it did it for me for knowing that I really truly loved art and performance. So when I was in high school I thought that I was a, a very good artist and I in, um, I enrolled into the advanced painting classes but I was horrible at it. Um, but the one thing that I did learn as a part of my painting that goes all the way back to high school is color and hues. And I use that in the way that I edit in Lightroom. So um, that ties in, that still ties into what I'm doing today. I really can't draw, so that's not any part of it. But another um, form of art that I use almost every session with especially my seniors is I will go to my car, I will turn on some music and I'll look at them and I will demonstrate a dance which is just rocking out to some good music and I tell them to dance with me so um, I have these girls in a random field and they're dancing and I get the best pictures of them laughing and smiling and just having a good time. Anytime that I attend, say, a festival or a concert, I feel freedom to be exactly who I am. Um, it's different when you're in an atmosphere where there's lots and lots of people that are like-minded and even if you go to a gallery of paintings, you're surrounded by like-minded people and you just genuinely feel enriched and you have something to, when it comes to, say, if I were to go to a photography art exhibit, I'm going to be inspired by that more than anything. It's something to look up to, even if you're not attending something like that in person. And I follow many, many photographers and artists that I really look up to. Without them, I would maybe lack a lot of um, inspiration. I mean, I get my inspiration from myself as well. Um, but it is very enriching to see other like-minded people's art. I think that community events that are surrounded by, say, music or artist shows or crafting shows or even farmer's markets, things like that, where you're bringing many people that are creating and you're bringing them all together, it's 
bringing the community together um, instead of, you know, ordering something on Amazon or supporting somebody that's not from anywhere around us. You're supporting your people in your area. So I just think it brings a sense of community. A world without the arts would be bland and horrible. You would miss beauty and sound ringing through your ears and something to dance with your partner with. Um, a photograph that brings back the feelings that you had that day. So um, the day you got married and how you felt when you saw your significant other, when they turned around and saw you. Um, without a photograph, we're relying on our feeble memory um, because the little pieces of our memory comes and goes. Um, yeah, so you just, it, it's nostalgia, a lot of it. There's different goals that I set for each type of photo shoot. Um, let's say for a boudoir session, I want the woman to not only feel beautiful in the moment, but I also want her to feel empowered and free to express herself um, in that moment. I just want the women to literally feel like a badass when they walk out of my studio because a lot of times they're going to come in here and they're going to be nervous or they've faced some type of life event where um, something has them down and they're looking to refine themselves and I want to help them find their beauty and to find themselves again and feel good about themselves again. Um, for say a senior session, I want all of my seniors to literally just have fun. I want them to remember the experience as their last big photo shoot as a kid. And um, yeah, I just want them, I want that to be centered around just them having a great time. For families or weddings, I, I want them to feel the memory of every little tiny kiss and hug that I captured in that moment. It's not really my style to have somebody go stand there and sit there and have children stand in place um, and smile at the camera. That's not really what my work is about. I try to capture authenticity and real emotions. So I want to capture if the man at the, the groom at the wedding sheds one single tear and his lip quivers just a little tiny bit, I want to capture that because that's what everybody's paying, to, pay, paying attention to at a wedding. Um, and I want the bride or the groom for that sake, I want their significant other to remember the way that that made them feel. I just want to freeze your feelings in a photograph. I want you to feel that when you're really old so you can remember back to those times. When I am going through the entire gallery, I do it quick first. And typically when I take the photos, I know right after I've taken it, oh, this is the one that I need to show everybody because it gave me chills or it kind of took my breath away a little bit in the moment. Um, so I typically know already what I want to show everybody before I go through the images. Um, but when I am going through them, I want to grab something that is going to make you extremely happy when you see it because the girl's nose is wrinkled up with so much happiness and her smile is so big that you can't scroll past it without bringing a smile on your face. Or when a dad is holding his daughter and she's having a meltdown and he gives her a kiss because that's real and that's authentic 
and I just, I want to show everybody the real and the raw and the, the emotions that I'm capturing with my camera. When I first started photography, success meant that I could pay my rent, I could feed my kids, and have just a little bit of money left over for other things. It was a do or die situation for me and the photography money was just extra money that was contributing to all the bills. So there wasn't nearly as much joy in what I do back then because I was just trying to make ends meet. And then after years and years of doing this, things have evolved and my life has gotten better and the circumstances have gotten better. And um, now I can focus on emotions instead of focusing on the money part. The money part is great. Um, you can really make quite a career out of doing photography. Um, it's, it kind of takes over your life just a little bit. Your life tends to revolve around it a bit. It's time consuming. It's not just, um, you have a nice camera, go click the button and it's done. That's not what it is. So I've given up a lot of time away from my own family so I can give all of my clients beautiful images. Uh, I sit at the computer for many, many hours every day. That is the harder part of the job. So it's evolved in a way that I genuinely, I'm out here doing this because I want to capture your memories for you. And yes, it's just, it's a bonus that I can do this as a career. I think once my youngest daughter, she's three, um, she is one of the five children that we have between my husband and I. I think once she gets a little bit older, I would really love if I could find a way to do more traveling with my photography, whether that's doing some destination weddings. Um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna go with that. The best advice that I would give myself, um, 13 years ago when all of my children were small is to not spend so much time at your computer. I really lost out a lot of time with my kids. And through the years, I've figured out different ways to change how I do things so I have way more time with my family. So the biggest piece of advice for me, if I could go back and talk to my younger self, I would tell her, to not focus so much on the money part of it because that's gonna come and to not miss out on so much of what your kids are doing. And as nice as it was that my oldest daughter Paige, she would park herself on my computer desk. She would sit on it while I was going through and editing. She spent a lot of time with me sitting right there, but it wasn't the kind of time that I wish I could go back and do again. So yeah, I would, I would tell my younger self to live a little bit more by what I'm preaching about making memories with your family and enjoying every little itty bitty tiny moment with them because it really does fly by so fast and I feel like that's why it's why photography is extremely important because you're documenting that and you cannot hit rewind. Myself, that's who. Seriously, I don't really have somebody that I look up to, to be honest with you. Honestly, that's not a good question for me. I'm a very driven woman, all on my own. Be a boss bitch, you can do it. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Oh, the biggest challenge of being a photographer is being self-employed. It's being 
a lonely in an adult world. Um, I have my kids, I have my family, but I do not have a social life at all. My day consists of I wake up, I go through images on my computer, I spend most of my day with my little one, and then in the evening I, I cook for my family, I go do my photo shoot, and then it's all over again. So lack of having co-workers is probably the biggest challenge, just not having much of a social life. You. Okay, maybe it's just me. I might be a little bit of a loner, but yeah, I, I have a select few friends, but my schedule doesn't match up with theirs, it seems like ever. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit lonely. Everything that I do is personalized around whoever I'm photographing. So prior to the sessions, I do a consultation with everybody and I stalk your social media just a little bit too. Um, because I want to know who you are before I meet you. So I want to know if you are typically a little bit more of a serious person or if you're the life of the party um, because I want to capture the real you. So I do my research beforehand, just know that. Um, I am a little bit of a stalker online when it comes to before, um, but that's to benefit you in every way um, because I want to I feel like my specialty is capturing authenticity. So I, I have like maybe five minutes once I pull up and I meet with you and that's not enough time for me to know exactly who you are. So yeah, I do some research beforehand and I feel like that's what gives me maybe an edge over other photographers is I'm capturing realness and authenticity and fun. Um, like I said, there's dance parties happening in fields and um, there's lots and lots of hugging and kissing and embracing and love with my session.